Hi, my name is Mark and welcome to the channel. Today, we're on a field trip at my local yarn shop, Around the Table Yarns in Shaker Heights, Ohio. We're sitting down today with co-owners Beth and Pam to talk about how they started their business and what they're up to now in year five as a thriving local yarn shop. Let's get into it. So we're sitting down to have a conversation with co-owners Beth and Pam. I'm Pam. I'm Beth. At Around the Table Yarns in Shaker Heights, Ohio. So the first thing I'd love to hear about is how the two of you connected and what was your spark to create this local yarn shop? Well, I'd put an ad in the paper. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually was... Um, do you like pina coladas? I do like pina coladas. Do you like walking in the rain? Getting uh, caught in the rain. We're getting caught in the rain. Um, I was knitting at my son's swim meet, and um, another mom had seen me, and and we, she was knitting, and said, you know, there's this woman over in the in Shaker Heights who has started a knitting group, and um, you should come. It's a lot of fun. So I went, and it was this lady here. Um, we were meeting at a local coffee. She was meeting at a local coffee house was new to the area and wanted to meet other people. And I think we probably kind of instantly connected. Um, you know, sarcastic, awesome knitters, talented, talented yes. gorgeous, yes. you know, all of those yes. things that just draw curious. people, curious, draw people together. And we, uh, we, and with a third person, the, the three of us became fast friends. And, um, so that's how we connected. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, um, I had, before we moved to, so we moved to Shaker like 17 years ago. And before I'd moved to Shaker, I had worked in my, um, my friend's yarn store in Indianapolis. So Susan at Mass Ave Knit Shop in Indianapolis was a dear friend and who gave me a chance to actually start working for her and starting to teach knitting. And I got to, <laughs> I got to put away all the yarn, and I got to unpack the yarn and do all of those fun things and organize it. And um, I spent several years doing that and really, really enjoying it, like really loving to working to work with the people and all of that. And when we moved to Shaker, that experience was not replicated in its entirety in any one store. Sure. So we had this, I mean, we have wonderful shops in this area. Um, some of them are a little further afield from right here, but there wasn't a place where I felt like I could go like I did there and like spend the afternoon and work on my projects and get help and get community. Mm -hmm. And I really missed that. That was something I really, really missed. And so um, in fact, Pam and I visited Mass Ave Knit Shop and talked with Susan and spent time in, in her shop. And Pam was, I think, taken in the same way that I was, that, yeah. that it was um, a, a genuine place to be comfortable and to work on things that you really love to do. Amazing. So we're very much um, in the model of or inspired by. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. So at Around the Table, first of all, the name, Around the Table, Yarns, <laughs> I think really represents well part of your mission. Mm -hmm. And that is to really yeah. serve your community, uh, both local and global, mm -hmm. but having a table. So talk yeah. a little bit about what your store offers in the hours you're open and what is the table? What does this mean when you're open? What are you offering? I don't really remember a time where we didn't have the name. I think the, the, um, the idea of the name around the table was always there. I don't remember when we actually settled on it, but that's what we were looking for. We were looking for... We were meeting at a coffee shop that that every Wednesday we made met on Wednesdays, and on Wednesdays they made popcorn, and every other Wednesday they burned the popcorn. So then you would go home, and everything that you were knitting smelled like burned popcorn. And the conversation started with, "Wouldn't there? Wouldn't it be great if there was a place where we could go and sit and not, you know, not smell like, like burnt popcorn. popcorn, or we could wind at, you know, get our, our our yarn wound up, or if I needed another needle, it was right there, you know, those kinds of things." Um, 
and where we would, could meet other people. Sure. So uh, when those kind of conversations, wouldn't it be great if kind of turned into, I think maybe we have to build it. Mm -hmm. So, um, but it always was about getting together with other people and doing these things. So um, when we were looking, and then when the Van Aken district was being built was about the same time our kids were moving out and we had more time and um, it just felt like a place we wanted to be a part of. And it, it, the, the whole idea of building this local community, um, we never dreamed of going global. That wasn't, <laughs> those were not part of the early plans. Um, we just wanted a place where people could come together, no matter their level, their skill level, their, their race, their gen, none of that. Everybody was going to walk in and be greeted and feel comfortable and feel like that they could be supported and be part of this knitting crochet community. And that, that whole idea of gathering around needed to happen around a table. Mm -hmm. So we found this really great, huge conference table that, you know, great for laying out projects and doing all sorts of things. And, and then everything just kind of got built around that. Mm -hmm. Um, so then we wanted to make sure that the the welcome was complete with great yarn, you know, and um, I think you you wanted to know like when we're open. Mm -hmm. We're open every day, which I think is amazing. <laughs> seven days a week, and, and partly we, that's because there's two of us, right, and so sure. we're able to um, spell <laughs> each other. We learned during the pandemic how much we needed time off because we were given some time off or got to to be got home. To have some time off. <laughs> um, and so the first year was the year before the pandemic and it, it was exhausting and it, it was exciting, but it was also exhausting. And so we've learned that we both need some time off, but because we don't both need to be here all the time, we're able to staff the store. Also, we have wonderful staff, yeah. um, but we're able to staff the store every day. And, and we've thought about whether or not we could be closed one day a week. I mean, it doesn't, it's not out of the question that a store yeah. would be closed one day a week. We can't figure out which day that would be. I, I distinctly remember like we were like keeping data that first, those first few months we were open. Our, we'll figure out what day would be the good day to close. Hello, Tebow. <laughs> this is Tebow. This is, this is he really wants to participate. He really does. He's wondering where his mic oh, is. He's checking out the mic. He really wants to know where his uh, mic is. Uh, um, he is our greeter. Um, and we, right from the beginning, we couldn't, we couldn't find a day no. that we should be closed. Like, you know, a lot of places are closed on Monday. Well, for sure we aren't going to be closed on Monday because that ended up being one of our busiest days. Right, right. Mm -hmm. You know, people <laughs> would run into a problem on Sunday night and didn't want to wait till Tuesday for another place to open. So, um, and then it just, once people found us, we just couldn't find a day to close. So definitely because there are two of us, we were able to make that work. Mm -hmm. Um, I totally, if we, if it had been one or the one other, or the other, for sure, I think maybe we would only be open a couple of <laughs> days a week. <laughs> and then um, our staff came and um, we've had some staff leave and more come, but everyone has added their own, um, put their own mark on it. And people have connected with other people besides us. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we're really lucky. We're very lucky. People come, you know, um, they'll come in and they look comfortable and I've never met them and they clearly have been here and they're, they're connected, but not to Beth or I, but to somebody sure. else who's come in, which is lovely. We have groups of people who have met here oh, yeah. and now go on retreats together. <laughs> and, um, you know, they met on our zoom groups during the pandemic. I mean, it's crazy how the, the community found itself, which, mm -hmm. um, which is wonderful. And Speaking, oh, yes. I was going to say that was another way that, um, you know, the pandemic was, uh, horrible experience. Um, it was certainly a horrible experience to have during your second year of business. And, um, and we got through by the skin of our teeth in some ways, but we also got through because we worked really, really hard all the way through it to create ways that people could connect to us. And those ways that people have connected to us have continued to be really important to us going forward. So um, for example, during the pandemic, we did three Zooms a day, oh every day. And we would get on Zoom and we would um, just open it up and have people 
drop in because people were stuck at home and they didn't have anyone to talk to and they didn't have anyone to knit or crochet with. And so we just, it, it was like 10 o'clock in the morning or 11 o'clock in the morning and two o'clock in the afternoon and six o'clock at night. And, and we did Zooms all day long. It felt like every day and that finally ended, but we still do a social Zoom twice a week. And somehow people found us who don't live at you who weren't part of our community to, nothing to do with us <laughs> and um so we've got people from canada and california and new york and louisiana and wisconsin who um on a weekly basis join us via yeah. zoom and are part of our our family and our community that um we wouldn't we wouldn't have had part of that were it not for the pandemic so and then we taught classes before the pandemic, we were teaching classes weekly. I mean, we've, we've not weekly, monthly. And we've finally been able to go back in the last several years to having a monthly beginning knitting, beginning crochet. And now we teach beginning Tunisian crochet as well. But um, during the pandemic, obviously we weren't doing one-on-one -on -one classes or three-on-one -on -one classes or whatever. And um, we decided that we were going to do video classes and we had, we have no production skills, none. none. We are bad at production, but we already had a document camera and we had the expertise of doing Zoom. And so we thought, okay, well, we'll figure this out. And we started offering video classes to help people who were at home, just like we were trying to do in the shop, in the yeah. shop before, the, before the shutdown happened. And so that turned into um, what we call now Project Monday which is, it was originally an all Zoom program. So it was offered originally twice a day, once in the afternoon, once in the evening. And uh, it was Sock Club. And we did that every Monday during the pandemic for about a year. And we just worked on socks. <laughs> and it was a lot of fun. Yeah. And now we do um, the same thing, but it's either a crochet project or a knit project. And it alternates each Monday. So each club there's four clubs meets once a month and there's a sock club still and a sweater club now and those are the knit ones and then there's a crochet projects class and a crochet mix and match blanket and so those classes are in person for people local to mm -hmm. you and they also have still a virtual element yeah and it's great because the in-person class gets us ready for the, yes. <laughs> for the evening there are guinea, There are guinea pigs for later in the day. <laughs> I can't go back and look at any of those early videos. They're so bad. They're so bad. It's like one overhead light and... Well, <laughs> the camera's over here. <laughs> right. I'm coughing. I'm getting up. You know, I can't, I can't watch them. They're terrible. But we get comments on them that we're like... That's how I learned how to do, how I, I go back and I watch your mat, your mattress stitch video all the time. I'm like, oh, please don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> please watch somebody else's, else's. <laughs> mattress stitch video. So back to the teachers and the staff you have, mm -hmm. I think still for anyone local to the shop or anyone passing through this area, really the community you create around the table, um, you have these teachers. So every day, an element that you're offering, which I think is really unique, is help. You're mm -hmm. offering sort of light assistance for people in a bind with their projects, yeah. people getting started who just need reassurance, or people with a lot of experience who just want another opinion. So, you know, a UFO is a UFO because something stopped you. And often, whatever that is, is not the biggest hurdle in the world, right. but it needs maybe another pair of eyes mm -hmm. and maybe a little bit of encouragement or advice or like, oh gosh, this is really a great sweater. Don't give up on it. You know, yeah. look at what the potential is here. So I think that um, both Pam and I started off um, being able to help people in the store. So like we already had a knowledge base of both knitting and crochet, more crochet over <laughs> here. <laughs> more, I mean, but we already had that level of um, expertise and the ability to help people. But like I said, we were, there's, we're a limited quantity. And so we have been so, I, I'm not going to even say lucky because people come in, we've hired from our customers and from our community. So people have come in and it's like, you're very good at that. <laughs> Would you like to teach, teach that? Yeah, that's right, exactly. And, and yeah. the answer is almost always no. No, <laughs> I do not. No, want to thank teach that. you. Yeah, but um, 
Pam and I taught, so we were teaching monthly beginning classes and we still do, but Pam and I taught all of those lessons and all of the, the more expert or more uh, specific skill classes. And um, as we gathered people around us, we were able to say, oh, you, you'd be really good at doing this. Yeah. And so that helped us build up this stable of wonderful teachers. And uh, getting help in a yarn shop is, it's hopefully what everybody can expect. When you go, if, you, if you're stuck on a project, hopefully the local yarn shop is the place that you can go to get help. And um, we wanted to make sure that technically helpful advice was available for people who are stuck on things. And so our teachers come in on a regular basis. So it's Pam and I on Mondays right now. And then Tuesdays, we have Alfreda who comes in in the afternoon, Tuesdays and Thursdays and Saturdays, actually is Alfreda's time. And then Peg comes in on Wednesdays and Beth Lucci is here on Fridays. Fridays. And Pam is here on Sundays. I'm here on Saturdays. So we have quite a good stable of people. Plus, as our staff has been with us now for more than a year, more than two years, more than three years, their skill levels have definitely been informed by working with the other teachers, working with right. us, working on their own. And so they're all sort of leveling up in a really organic and nice way. And, and just standing in the store, I can hear people getting helped from even newer staff members sure. who have been listening yeah. to what is going on around them because that's going on all the time right. in the store. I love that you say that the teachers and their skills are informed by what's going on, the projects people are doing in the community. And I'd say in the same way, your customers who maybe feel that they're nowhere near ready to teach someone else or guide someone else through a project, they're also reaching that level. And mm -hmm. I think they're inspired by mm -hmm. all of the projects around them by listening to someone work through and troubleshoot an sure. issue, and then they gain that skill, yeah, which is great. I mean, I hear you say in the shop that you want people to succeed. Mm -hmm. Your goal is that if somebody comes in and they buy a crochet hook, if they buy a sweater quantity of yarn, whatever it is, that they succeed, that they enjoy mm -hmm. right. using the materials, and that they're excited to have this craft in their life. And yeah. so many people get discouraged because it can be so hard to learn just from reading a pattern or yeah. even just from watching a YouTube video. Different styles of teaching apply to different people. So yes, having that right. in-person element mm -hmm. where someone can come in, show you an issue or a question, it may not even be a real issue, and then right. they can get a solution sometimes in 30 seconds. Right. Mm -hmm. Other times they might stick around for a couple hours, mm -hmm. but it's nice right. they have that option. Yeah. Right. And when, one of the things that I've discovered, the more people I help, the more things you realize like, no pattern is written the same way at all. There's 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 a, there's, a, there's, there's no a, standard. There's no standard. There's a whole language to patterns, and there are twelve or twenty thousand of those languages. Mm -hmm. So sometimes people get stuck, like I don't know what that means, and I only know what it means because I've come across it maybe four or five other times. So mm -hmm. um, sometimes that's just the hurdle they need. But there have been times where we've had a lot of people around the table and Beth's helping someone and I'm helping someone and I'll see one of our other customers, like they'll be talking, we'll get up and go and help somebody because they've already jumped that hurdle. Yeah. And I just, I love that, that, that there, people can just feel connected that way. Absolutely, and you really created such a strong community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not just people who come to your store, but people, like you said, who connect with each other right. and form these lifelong friendships. Oh, it's great. They're able to jump in and they want to jump in and yeah. help others succeed, whether yeah. it's a best friend or a stranger. Yeah. Right, absolutely. So yeah. I'm interrupting this interview for just a minute to talk to you about why I'm making this video. So as I've mentioned, my local yarn shop is so important to me. I'm really lucky to have a great community, a great environment where I can work on projects, where I can shop, and where I can grow. So before moving to this area, before moving to Cleveland and having around the table, my crafting abilities were nothing like they are now. I mean, I had learned to knit. If you watched my video about how I got my start, I was learning, I was challenging, challenging myself to new projects, excuse me, but I didn't have mentors in my life. I didn't have teachers I could go to until I found this shop. So Around the Table Yarns has shaped so much of who I am as a person, and it's absolutely shaped my abilities as a crafter and creator. So with my ability here on YouTube, with this channel, um, 
I want to be able to share something that I love so much with you. So um, stick around to the end of this video to find out how you can shop at Around the Table Yarns, whether you are in Northeastern Ohio or across the globe. And um, there's also going to be a coupon code you can use to shop. So stick around to see that later in the video. And for now, let's get back into the interview. So for those of you who are local to Northeastern Ohio or are planning a trip through this area, how do we find you? How do we shop at Around the Table Yarns? So we are located in Shaker Plaza, which in is Shaker Heights. in Shaker Heights, Ohio, <laughs> um, which is part of um, a newly developed um, section called the Van Aken District. And we actually um, have expanded our space in the last year. Um, so we have um, both sides of, uh, of a building. We have signs on both sides. But our retail side um, faces the Van Aken District. We have a classroom in our old space, um, which has been wonderful for us to be able to expand. Um, so we kept the table over there and got a new table over here um, to really widen our, our widen our space. Um, but the retail side is located at what's 20166 Van Aken Boulevard. Van Aken Boulevard. Amazing. Amazing. Yes. And this, um, this area is actually really close to a highway, 270, 271. 271. Um, the chagrin exit of 271 um, makes it very accessible if you're traveling through the Cleveland area. Um, we're not too far from downtown Cleveland by highway. We're not too far from Pennsylvania. We're not too far from um, Columbus. Columbus. We're, yeah. yeah, we're Things very like nicely located. Yeah, Fantastic. and there's free parking. We have um, we're part of a plaza, so there's there's actually ample parking on both sides of our building. Yeah, great. Which is good. <laughs> so for those people who are local mm -hmm. and want to join in with, with other events you do, mm -hmm. what sort of things should they be looking for and how can they find that information? So we, um, we learned that it's really important to let people know what events we're doing. Yeah. And um, although it is sometimes, uh, it's not a struggle, but sometimes oh, it's, it's, a struggle. it's a challenge. <laughs> we do yeah. Instagram Live every week. So on Mondays, we do Instagram Live at 5. And yeah. uh, Pam and I get on Instagram, on two, usually in two different locations, mm -hmm. and talk about what's on our needles what's, or what's on our hooks and what's going on with classes and what's going on with events in the store. If we with have any new products, mm -hmm. things like that, um, new trunk shows, things like, you know, just up-to-date information and mostly it's a comedy show <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah so yeah. mostly it's uh the two of us discussing yeah life the universe and everything yeah and discovering new ways that instagram live can uh, kick us off <laughs> <laughs> so that happens at five o'clock um it's followed by our zoom for project monday so it only lasts for an hour at the most and uh, usually it's a little bit shorter than that. And then on Wednesdays, we put out a weekly email newsletter. And that is something you can sign up for by giving us your email in the store if you come in or if you go to our website, AroundTheTableYarns.com. Um, there's a place in the bottom right-hand corner where you can add yourself to our email list, and then you'll get it. If you unsubscribe from the email list, which is perfectly valid and we understand and God, we get enough email ourselves, yes. um, we cannot add you back in. So if you unsubscribe from the list and you and you did that and you regret it now, you can join back in. You can in. come back in, but yes. we can't actually put you back in yeah. because of the rules of, of email. Yeah. So you should you know, know that. I did that once. Yes, you did. <laughs> before I lived in Cleveland. Before I lived here, I was in Cleveland for work and I came to the shop. I bought yarn, I loved the shop, and I was on the email list, but I didn't live here, and uh, I had no money at the time to buy yarn, period. I was a graduate student, and so yeah. I unsubscribed, and then I came here, and you started asking me, oh, did you see it in the email? And I just say, I actually unsubscribed. I felt really guilty, but now I've signed up again, Okay. so I get those beautiful emails. Do you read the emails? I sure do. Nice. Sure do good, now. good, good. <laughs> so we try to... So um, we are like every other human on the planet. We have... I think there's... I did some editing. I think there's 60,000 in my email inbox right now. I don't know where Crazy. you are. Yeah, I'm, I, I haven't looked. But um, so we understand people don't want one more email. So we try to limit it to one email a week. So only if we forget something that's really important will we send another one. Um, we try and do it on Wednesdays. 
and we try and put all of the information you'll need for the next seven days in that email. Um, we've started a new thing that we're doing, a weekly flash sale. We're actually announcing that on Mondays and it starts on Tuesdays, but it will go in the Wednesday email and it will last until Friday midnight. So, you know, we're trying to um, keep people informed. We have a couple different ways of doing it. Um, a lot of our customers tell us that they can't make the Instagram Live at 5 on Monday, but it's on our Instagram channel. So if you go to it, you can actually just click on the most recent watch it video later. Right, right. and watch it. Um, I like to I like to see what we did, and I watch it in the morning I when I brush my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it doesn't take me an hour to yeah. brush my teeth. Well, sometimes it takes me Right, 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 right. So for people who might be tuning into Instagram Live or signing up for the newsletter, if they don't live here, but they're looking for a place to shop online, I talk a lot about shopping local, even if that local business is not physically local to you, but if you want to support a small business instead of a big box store, you do a lot of online sales and you ship yarn out we and do. tools out daily. So All over the world. Yeah. Uh, it was never part of our original plan. We wanted to be a local community we thought maybe online would come later, you know, and then the pandemic forced our hand on that. Um, and again, back to lucky that there are two of us, we were able to pivot. Mm -hmm. And um, one of us worked in the shop and uh, one of us worked at home and <laughs> took picture and we put everything up and created a website um, with absolutely no Background knowledge. Uh, background knowledge or skill whatsoever. But um, we asked for a lot of help. We asked for a lot of help. <laughs> and and we've just been able to maintain that. And that's part of how our community grew was being able to put everything online. Mm -hmm. um, so we do have a very vibrant uh, website. We put everything up on the website. We ship daily. Um, UPS picks up Monday through Friday. So if you place an order, it's going to get packaged up and shipped out within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And we really pride ourselves on um, being quick. We keep try to keep the shipping costs as absolutely low as humanly possible. And like everywhere else, costs have gone up, but we're, we're trying to keep that low and just trying to, even our online co customers to have a really positive experience mm -hmm. with the shop. Um, we occasionally make a mistake and we do our very best to make it right. Um, we also do a fair amount of Zoom shopping sometimes. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. So, because um, sometimes you're shopping and, and you're putting yarns together or colors together and looking at a picture from one screen and a picture from another can be hard. We're always happy to go live either FaceTime or on Zoom and show things in person. And so we've had, um, we've had a lot of, we do a lot of sales that way. So Very you can cool. see things together. And we do a lot of phone orders. So people, and we encourage this. We absolutely encourage Pick up the phone. If you don't understand something that's going on on the website, if the if the sale isn't going through, if there's any issue whatsoever, if you have any question about anything, we're open every day. So there's a reasonable chance that you'll be able to talk to us. If you call and leave a message, we get those messages by email as well as by voicemail. So it's we don't have to pick up the phone right. to see that we have a message from somebody. And the transcript of the message is actually in the email. So we can really see what's going on from anywhere at any time. And we try and respond to those also as quickly as possible. The, um, the times that we've spent with people on the phone are often so enjoyable and so helpful to us. I had somebody who called during the pandemic who um, was interested in Louise Crowder's book, Knitted Wild Animals, or Knitted Animals, Knitted, Knitted, animals. An Knitted animal Friends, yeah. which I was like, what is it? And so I'm writing it down, Louise Crowder, Knitted Animal Friends. Okay. And she goes, but you carry the yarn. And I said, we do, we carry the yarn for this. And she said, yeah, you have, you have all the yarn that this book calls for. And I was like, Yay. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. Good, good on us. Yeah. And it turns out that this book has the most wonderful knitted animal friends and they're, they're done not in the round. They're done on straight needles and the, each animal is about this tall and is huggable and cute and just a lovely like facial sort of, they're just so fun. And then their wardrobe is extensive so if you like dressing little stuffed animals, yeah. they're they have this great like raincoats and dresses and tutus and, and tutus and robes and, and and they're all interchangeable. So every animal can wear the clothes that you see on another animal. So if you like the the horse but you want to put it in the sheep's yeah clothing, you yeah can. you can do that. <laughs> but you were talking to somebody online. 
so, or unfun so about it. So she told me about this book and right. we um, started to stock the book. And we have probably, because of that, have had like a whole different, oh, like a whole nother branch to our uh, business because of one phone call and an yeah. online order and then a, a phone order it was amazing. So yeah. we love building those kind of connections. And that's just another part of our community mm -hmm. that way. Yeah. So when she shared that, we have people who have been knitting those animals now and have made every single animal. In Dozens. The book. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> All right. You may remember my knitted animal friend that I attempted. I talk about it in my um, my failures, my things I did not make in the year 2023. So I've seen a lot of people with their knitted animal friends. These are the patterns that um, Beth and Pam were just talking about from that book. And they're really cute. They're adorable. I failed with my first attempt. So hopefully I'll get back into it at some point. But if it's not something you're familiar with, you should definitely check it out. So approaching the end of this video here, I'm going to pass the camera back to Beth and Pam so that they can show you a few fibers, a few yarns that they're really excited to be carrying in their shop. But before I do that, I want to tell you how you can shop at Around the Table Yarns. Again, this shop means so much to me. It's shaped so much of who I am, and I would be really upset if I didn't have this outlet, this community in my life. So I'm super lucky to have this, and if you're local, come check it out. If you're not local to us, then check us out online. So you can do that by visiting www.aroundthetableyarns.com and Beth and Pam are generously offering a 10% off coupon for all online orders. Um, this is good for your first online order at aroundthetableyarns.com and you can simply add things to your cart and then enter the coupon or promotion code MAKERMARK10, T-E-N. So I'm showing that here on my screen Maker Mark 10, spelled out T E N, and that's going to get you 10% off your first online order at Around the Table. This coupon code is good for the first 100 people to take advantage of it. So check out the website, check out the different fibers that they offer, and see if there's something for you. Almost all of the fiber and notions that you've seen scrolling by in this video are listed on the website. So the world is your oyster if you're looking to shop from this local yarn shop. Um, if you're looking at things that are not listed on the website, that's some of the bags, um, trunk show items, the stashables, the mini skeins that Beth is going to talk about in just a little bit. Those things can be viewed through Zoom or FaceTime. So you can email or call the shop and you can set up a time to look at those items over the phone, over a video chat. And Beth and Pam are happy to do that. They're happy to connect with people all over the world who are interested in shopping locally. Um, at Around the Table Yarns. The shop is open seven days a week from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Tuesday through Friday and 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Saturday through Monday. So give them a call, send an email, place an order if you'd like, and hopefully you'll have a great experience shopping with me at my local yarn shop. One more thing to note, if you plan to make a purchase from Around the Table Yarns, orders under $100 before tax have a flat rate shipping fee applied but orders over $100 get free shipping. Uh, I think there's a separate shipping fee if you are shipping outside of the United States, but they ship all over the world. So hopefully you'll find something that you want to try out from my local shop. Let's get back to Beth and Pam and see a couple of the products that they're excited about. We love Sweet Georgia yarns, and we had them initially in the store in several colors, but recently they completely revised their entire palette, and we've decided, uh, like we do on many things, go big or go home. So we have every color that Sweet Georgia is producing in their Tough Love sock yarn. So this has been our go-to sock yarn. It is durable. It has a nylon component. It has a generous 400, I'm looking, 425 yards. And the color is saturated and gorgeous. So this is their main color line. And then they have a palette that is really deep and dark. And then it gets a little bit lighter and even more pastel after that. And then there are some colors that they brought out that they couldn't, they couldn't say goodbye to. So when they changed their whole palette, they kept many that they just adored. And then they have neutrals as well. Um, one of the things I love about them is they do these sock blanks and a sock blank is an already knitted 
item. This one is actually a double sock blank, so it goes from one color to another. There's two strands, and the strands are dyed at the same time in the sock blank, so that when you make a sleeve or a pair of socks or something by unraveling this, you have a matching gradient in your project. They also have single sock blanks, and they also have mini skeins, which we love. They're called Party of Five, and they are uh, vibrant and just a little bit of of something something for your for your project. When we opened, one of the things we really wanted to offer was um, a variety of price points in yarn, but maintaining a really high level of quality. And we found this brand, um, it's actually pronounced Scapegis, but um, I can't say that on a regular basis. It, we pronounce it Sheepgis. It's a, a Dutch company and they do really, really affordable, high quality, this happens to be an all acrylic anti-pilling yarn. It is our most favorite go-to yarn for blankets, washable, dryable. It's absolutely fantastic. It comes in a huge range of colors and in two weights, a DK weight and then a, a heavy worsted or Aran weight in some really just fabulous, fabulous palettes of colors. We recently had um, an idea about yarns in our stashes. Our husbands uh, teased us that they thought that when we opened a yarn store that we were going to get rid of our stashes and we didn't initially, but then we thought about it. And Pam and I both and some of our um, employees have been holding on to really lovely hand-dyed single skeins of sock yarns um, for a long time. And they weren't necessarily going to all get made into something. And many times we just wanted a little bit of that yarn. We didn't want all of it. And so we brought all of that together and created stashables. They're 20 grams, little mini skeins of hand-dyed sock yarns. They are from all sorts of different places. They are souvenir yarns that we've collected. They're from dyers that we've had in the store. They're from all over the world. I can tell you some of them have traveled with me great distances. And um, we're really proud of this collection. And it's great if you want to build your own Advent set. So if you like making projects with mini skeins, this is the place to come to, to get a great collection of mini skeins. Um, we don't advertise them by the dyer because we don't have the labels on them anymore. We don't offer them online, unfortunately, but the reason is there's so many of them, there's no way for us to keep track of them online. And that's a real issue. <laughs> so when we um, when people come in, they can pull these, these bins out and look at them. So we can pull out the yarn and display it and put it on the table and we can offer that service by Zoom or by FaceTime. <laughs> <laughs> I would say our absolute um, number one seller uh, online is our Katona yarn, which is a mercerized cotton fingering weight yarn. It is, um, it is a workhorse of a yarn. It has beautiful, beautiful colors, a huge range of them. It uh, knits and crochets up beautifully. It's um, it got a beautiful sheen. It's got a beautiful drape. It's wonderful for utility things as well as garments, blankets, shawls, wraps, tops, um, just a real workhorse of a yarn and one of our absolute favorites. We're very proud of collaborations that we have with dyers in, um, in our local area and also in our a little bit further afield. One of our local dyers who we have worked with consistently almost since we opened is Tina from Tina's Twisted Fibers. Tina has created custom colorways for us for the store. This one is for our third birthday. I want to say it's our third birthday. It's called 1095 days and we got to pick all of the colors and then she put it together for us in a custom colorway. Um, She's done other custom colorways. This is one that we had for our, nope, sorry, that's not it. This is the one from our first retreat. And we had it in February, so it's called Sweet Treat because it was our retreat colorway. But um, Tina is a wonderful dyer to work with, and she has a great color sense. Some of her own inventions are just rich and luscious colors that um, 
work beautifully in all kinds of knitted or crocheted items. Another dyer that we have met through, um, through the years is Kat from Why Not Fibers. Kat comes from Traverse City, Michigan, but she was down here for a fiber show and we were in the booth across from her and we got to talking and her yarn is so, so beautiful. So Kat sources her yarns locally in Michigan and then finds mills in the United States to process that yarn and then she dyes it. And her, her palette is very rich and very vibrant and very natural. Um, and her yarns are springy. They're not treated, so they're not super wash yarns. This one is called Spry Worsted and we are very fortunate to be the only place that she's selling this yarn in the country or anywhere. It's the only place you can get this yarn. But this is a Polypay and Targi cross. It's 220 yards of absolutely squishy yumminess. And I can't wait to make my sweater out of that. As always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for making it to the end of this video. I hope that this was a style you enjoyed. Uh, something I'd love to do with the channel as I move forward is to do more interviews, to sit down with yarn shop, business owners, and also sit down with a lot of the knitting and crochet influences in my life and have a conversation with them, learn about how they got their start, what has shaped them and their crafting, and hopefully be able to show off some of the beautiful things that they've made to you. So thank you for being here with me. Um, if you want to learn more about Around the Table Yarns, visit their website, www.aroundthetableyarns.com. Follow them on their YouTube channel at Around the Table Yarns. Follow them on Instagram. Uh, there are lots of ways to stay in touch, and I think it's always a fun experience to connect with a shop, even if it's not your local yarn shop. Um, another way you can learn more about them is by seeing my past video on the Winter Knitting and Crochet Retreat that was hosted by Around the Table. A uh, really beautiful experience. So if you haven't seen that already, go check it out on my channel and uh, let me know what you think. As always, let me know in the comments what you liked, what you want to see more of, and if you have any questions. Thanks for spending this time with me. Happy knitting, happy crocheting, happy crafting, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. How's that hair? Oh, it's not good. <laughs> I could feel it deflating in the first section. You're both on such a roll. And stuff. I gotta put the onion back in the loaf. <laughs> I put the bloomin' and bloomin' I got. Please leave that in. <laughs> we need a little bit. Are we filling in? Like we're filming now? Yes. yes okay. It's all recorded. It's all good. Okay. Hi.